In this video, we take a look at the data structure, hash tables. So what is a hash table? The goal of a hash table is to immediately find an item in a sorted or unsorted list without the need to compare other items in the data set. Programming languages use hash tables to implement a dictionary data structure. A hashing function is used to calculate the position of an item in a hash table. So here, a hashing function is applied to an item to determine what we hope is a unique hash value, its position in the hash table. There are many different hashing functions in use today. A very simple example is adding up the ASCII values of all the characters in a string and calculating the modulus of that value by the size of the hash table. So assuming a table size of 10, we could say Florida, for example, we would say F equals 70. This is the deanery value of capital F. And then an L equals 108 and an O equals 111. We carry on and we end up with the total 705. We then do 705 modulus 10, because that's the size of the final table, and it gives us 5. We've now calculated, using our very simple hashing function, the position in the final table to store the text value Florida. A hash table needs to be at least large enough to store all the data items, but is usually significantly larger to minimize the chance of the algorithm returning the same value for more than one item. This is known as a collision. For example, let's look at trying to store Delaware. So capital D is 68, lowercase e is 101. We carry that through, add the values together, and we get 805. We do 805 modulus 10, just like before, and we get 5 again. So the position of Delaware is 5. Well, since two data items cannot occupy the same position in the hash table, a collision has occurred. So what are the properties of a good hashing function or algorithm? Well, we should be able to calculate it quickly. It should result in as few collisions as possible and use as little memory as possible. There are many strategies for resolving collisions generated from hashing functions. A simple solution is to repeatedly check the next available space in the hash table until an empty position is found and store the item there. This is known as open addressing. To find the item later, the hashing function delivers the start position from which a linear search can then be applied until the item is found. This is known as linear probing. In this example, we can see that Delaware has a hash value of 5, but the address is occupied by Florida. Therefore, Delaware is placed at 6, the next available position. California now comes in and has a hash value of 6, but can't occupy its intended position, so must be stored at the next available position, 7. A disadvantage, therefore, of linear probing in this way is that it prevents other items from being stored at their correct location in the hash table. This can also result in what's called clustering, several positions being filled around common collision values. Notice that with a table size of 10, two collisions have occurred. With a table size of 5, three collisions occur, resulting in a less efficient algorithm but a reduced memory footprint. If the table size would be increased one space to 11, we'd actually get no collisions in this situation. With hashing algorithms, there's often a trade-off between the efficiency of the algorithm and the size of the hash table. The process of finding an alternative position for items in the hash table is known as rehashing. An alternative method of handling collisions is to use a two-dimensional hash table. It's then possible for more than one item to be placed at the same position, known as chaining. Here we see that Florida and Delaware can occupy the same position, but in different elements of a 2D array. Another possibility would be to use a second table for collisions, known as an overflow table, which can then be searched sequentially. You could also use a linked list to maintain your overflow, again searched sequentially. 
So what are the applications of a hash table? Hash tables can be used in situations where items in a large data set need to be found quickly. Typical uses include file systems linking a file name to the path of the file, or identifying the keywords in a programming language during compilation. There are three main operations which can be performed on a hash table. Add, add new item to a hash table. Delete, removes an item from a hash table. And retrieve, retrieves an item from a hash table using its calculated hash value. Having watched this video, you should be able to answer the following key question. How do hash tables work? Dave and I know that data structures and algorithms are one of the hardest areas of the course. And we've therefore written a dedicated book, which is available to purchase on Amazon. The book covers all the data structures and algorithms you need to be aware of for the exam. Each one has its own dedicated chapter. The chapter overviews the data structure or algorithm, gives you applications, operations, links to our videos online, and goes over the algorithm in simple structured English, a visualization, pseudocode, and is fully coded in Python, C-sharp, and Visual Basic.